This video is brought to you by NVIDIA and Eno 3D graphics cards. Okay, so I played five hours of Cyberpunk. It was fucking awesome. I'm gonna tell you all about it. Uh, I just wanna say this video is gonna be pretty chill though. I'm actually moving house tomorrow. I played like five hours of Cyberpunk today. Uh, it's now like nine o'clock cause I just re recorded my layman video. You can see like my whole house is kind of empty now cause we're about to move. This video is rushed, but I wanted to get out this video on time just to share my thoughts because Cyberpunk is definitely the real deal having played it. I had my doubts given the trailer and how good it looked. Uh, they have delivered, so let me show you Cyberpunk, or at least talk about it because this uh, is so good. Uh, let's talk firstly about what I played, what I experienced and how that all worked, okay? I played for five hours. I was running on local hardware. Some of the tests that you would have seen would have been on GeForce Now from other content creators, other outlets and whatever else. I played on a 2080 Ti and some sort of CPU. I don't know, it was a good one. I played on an Xbox controller. I was not allowed to play on keyboard and mouse. That was the basics. There are actually three starting areas for this game and they each have their own kind of sequence that takes about 30 to 40 minutes to play through before you get onto the main sort of like, you know, the open world and the main quests and whatever else, the main campaign. Uh, I played through all three of the starting areas just so I could see them all. And then I also played some of the main campaign as well. Okay, that's what I played. Let's talk first about character creation. Yes, you can create your own character. You will select body type. You will select a voice for that body type. There is a ton of customization available. Obviously like hairdos and scars and tattoos. And there's like the digital kind of stuff that they have jammed into their skin and whatever. There's the teeth. For some reason, you can have pink teeth in this game. I don't know why that's a thing, but it's a thing. It doesn't have the facial molding stuff, at least not the, what I could see. Maybe I missed it. I was kind of going through it kind of quick, but uh, look, there's plenty of customization there. You are gonna be able to make your own unique character that you like, but it's not like triple S tier customization like you would have seen in some of these crazy MMOs or whatever. It's just pretty damn good. In this process, you will also select your starting stats. It matters, obviously, you, there's things like like, you know, body, which is about your health and your strength and all that sort of stuff. Weapon proficiency, there's reflexes, which helps you with certain types of weapons. I won't get into all the detail of that. You've seen that sort of stuff in RPGs before. It's very similar here. I think there were six or seven core stats. Um, and it's, you know, what you'd expect. What was very interesting is that you got to select one of three different backstories. And that actually has a fairly significant impact on your playthrough. One, because of your starting area. And two, because that choice actually affects the rest of your gameplay in terms of your interactions with others, dialogue options, etc., etc. The first one I played through was Corpo or something like that. It was the corporate sort of starter story. And uh, you're in a big Shinra tech kind of building and you're meeting with some big hotshot and he's telling you to do some secret, you know, corporate espionage mission because he wants to knock off one of his rivals for a promotion. And, uh, you know, so you go through that, it ends up taking you out into the city, in to a bar and eventually, you know, stuff goes down and then you find yourself in the main quest. So that whole thing took about 30 minutes. Um, that was one story. Well, the other one that I played through next was the Nomad story, which starts outside of Night City in this desert area, which just looks stunning, by the way, like stunning. And uh, you're there fixing a car and the local sheriff is giving you some grief. And eventually you catch up with someone because you're trying to smuggle something th across the border into Night City. The authorities catch you and they're like, chasing you, massive car scene, it was so good. Uh, yeah, really great starting sequence, love that one. And then the third one was kind of like a street kid, you know, you're starting out in the slums and uh, you literally start by sort of like, you're looking in a mirror and your nose is broken and you have to like, kind of like fix your nose, which is, you know, you know what I mean. Anyway, it turns out your friend has gotten mixed up with the wrong people and you kind of need to boost a car to help get him out of trouble and uh, shit goes down and again, just awesome stuff. Really great breakneck kind of introductions to these worlds. One of them in the sort of upper echelons of corporate society, one down in the slums, just sort of like, you know, scraping to live and the other one outside of Night City entirely and just all of them were just awesome. Absolutely love them. And uh, yeah, within the next 30 minutes, you're into the main quest line and things continue from there. So this is a good time to pause and talk about 
Just the visual design of this game. I mean, like, just... Oh, I, oh, I can't imagine what it would be like being a CD Projekt Red artist and having to create all of the things they've created. Like, essentially, the way to think about it is we know that video games, when they're single player, linear games, they have more detail in them because they're very sort of like narrow experiences with a small number of NPCs and a small number of environments. So they can afford to really go the extra mile on the environmental detail and player detail, whatever else. Okay. Imagine that level of detail, but kind of like across an open world game. I mean, every space I encountered was just so unbelievably striking. In terms of just the environment design and each of the NPCs populating those environments, the, the clothes that they're wearing, the graffiti and the different sort of paneling and lighting and smoke and fog and just like, uh, I mean, I was just walking around the starting area, the corporate headquarters, just, I wasn't even pushing fully forward on this analog stick because I wanted to walk slowly to take it in. It's really stunning what they have done here. And oh my God, this loading sequence I went through when like I left the corporate building and then I had to fly out and it was like a masked loading sequence, okay? So I'm in this car and I can just look out the window, but I can see this entire city out there and just seeing it sort of scroll by and then it just seamlessly transitions and I land and I'm in the thick of it and I can just walk out into it. And, oh man, it's just, as I said, these artists are geniuses and the amount of work that they have put in to create a space this big and this diverse, it's so diverse, like, it's, uh, anyway, I'm getting overexcited. But look, visually, uh, this is one of the most ambitious games I've ever seen. Uh, incredible. And I can't wait for you guys to see it and just like walk around in it yourself. As I said, I was very skeptical about how it would actually turn out versus the trailers. On PC, it's 90% there. I would say 90% because I don't think the world is quite as populated as we saw in those trailers. It doesn't have as many people, but like only like 10% left. So, you know, it's kind of nitpicking almost. It, you still walk out there and it looks stunning. I will flag though, I wonder how well this will run when we are talking about like consoles. You know, I wonder how this run, runs on the Xbox One S because I was running on a top of the line PC and uh, getting beautiful performance, but I don't know about consoles. I guess performance is a good thing to talk about as well. I was running it at 1080p, silky smooth 60 frames a second at least, with ray tracing enabled. I will talk more about ray tracing at the end of this video in a sponsored block, so keep that in mind. But with ray tracing enabled, I was still getting solid 60, 70, 80 frames a second. It was just beautiful and um, yeah, we'll talk about ray tracing more later. So these starting areas that you go through, you don't do a lot of fighting in those. It's very cutscene driven, okay? After that, when you get to the main quest line, the one that's shared across everyone, everyone will experience it. You then go through combat tutorials. There's uh, hacking, there's stealth, there's melee, and there's shooting. So hacking, I didn't love the hacking. Uh, it's difficult to really explain it without just getting bogged down in detail, but essentially it just, didn't really flow. It had quite a few different button prompts and menu options. And then they boot you to a different screen and you input a thing and then you come back and you to do something else and whatever else. It could be really great if after five or six hours, lots of different options open up and you're really used to those menus and you can make interesting things happen. Uh, at the very beginning though, I don't get to experience that. So for that reason, I didn't love that kind of bounced off a little bit, but look, We'll see, obviously reserving judgment. The stealthing is okay. I did notice that uh, the enemies, they sort of have one of the indicators above their head and you know, if they see you for too long, it fills up and they've spotted you. They seemed quite blind. You know, you're only sort of 15 feet away from them and they're sort of like squinting at you and whatever. I've seen it before. I don't love that stuff, but look, it is what it is. It's there. I got the impression that stealth wasn't exactly breaking new ground. However, there might be all sorts of other stealth systems that become available later. There was the melee stuff, which is kind of like three hit combo, you know, boxing. And that was fine as well. Um, there was a sword though that I got to use at one point, which didn't feel good. The, the, the sword combat just felt very kind of, it just lacked weight. It just felt unsatisfying. Don't know if they'll do further work on that, um, but that wasn't great. And then there was a shooting. You know what? I really love the shooting. Played with an Xbox controller. There was a lot of auto aim. 
a lot of auto aim kicking in. I did ask the developers about that. They confirmed that's optional and you can turn it off. When I play on console though, I like auto aim because I play on PC mainly, keyboard and mouse. My aim with the controller is shit. So I was lapping up the auto aim. It just felt like all my guns stuck to targets like glue. And I just got to focus on having fun and like, you know, moving through combat rather than like, oh, I missed a headshot. So I like that, guns feel beautiful, great feedback, great recoil, great sound design, great everything, you know? I think a lot of people had concerns about, you know, weapon design or weapon mechanics when they saw the second trailer that came out last year. And uh, I can tell you right now, I have no issues with anything that I experienced from the pistol and the assault rifle, the only two weapons I used. They both handled beautifully and I'm like, cool, tick. Well done, City Project Red. Just keep doing more of that. This is also a good time to talk about itemization. Uh, yeah, so obviously there's going to be tons of different weapons to collect. I collected some identical pistols that all had different stats on them. They had different DPS values. They also had different damage types that they applied. They had different mod slots and different uh, types of mods that could be applied to them. And that was just within the first few hours I experienced all that. So I get the impression there's gonna be a staggering amount of itemization available. There's also crafting. One thing that kind of disappointed me was that there's no like wardrobe feature. I think we saw a wardrobe feature in like the first trailer or something where you kind of pull it off the rack and it's got the stats on it and that's how you do it. You just equip clothes from your inventory now. You can go to your wardrobe in your apartment, but you can't do anything. You can just see it. There's nothing to input and no prompt. Really bummed out about that. I like that feature, but hey, look, that's that's nitpicking. So then I went out into the open world stuff and I started doing the quest that we saw from the 2018 trailer uh, where I had to, you know, go up the lift and rescue the lady from the bathtub and then trauma team came and rescued her and uh, had to drive around a bit. It's exactly what it said on the tin. You know, I just... <laughs> It really was exactly that experience. Graphically, gameplay wise, the choice that I had in that mission as well, choice is baked very deeply into this game already. From the very beginning, you get tons of dialogue options that will manifestly impact your sort of ways forward. In combat scenarios, you know, in that mission alone, I could have gone straight into the room and blown everybody up. But my partner, Jackie, was telling me, hey man, just hang back for a bit. I'm like, all right, cool. I took his advice, hid in the corner. Two of the enemies then left and I could take them down silently, making the rest of the room easier. Trauma team, when they came, they're telling me to stay back and I disobeyed them. They then shot me with a taser and, uh, and then Jackie commented on that. He's like, hey man, should have listened to them, should have done what they said. So choice is baked into everything that you do and the game is built to recognize and reflect that choice at every step. This look like a landing pad to you. Could have fucking crushed us. Okay, no, no, hey, we, we ain't looking for no beef with you. But that quest was just exactly, as I said, what you saw in the trailer, except playable, and it was super fun. When that was done, I then got to do some just open world exploration stuff. So I drove around in my car. I don't know what the name of that car is. It probably has an awesome name. I don't know what it is. Driving is great. Like, I really love the, the mechanics. You know, you play something like Ghost Recon Breakpoint or Wildlands, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not how a car should drive, you know? But this one, as soon as I picked it up, I'm like, yep, cool, this is good. It's quite heavy. If anything, maybe just a little bit too heavy, maybe a little bit too much grip on the road. It could be a little bit lighter but again that's nitpicking uh i told the developers i'm like i feel think this feels fantastic in terms of handling and they were like phew we're really nervous about driving mechanics we're worried that people would hate them i don't think you guys will hate them i think it handles well you can destroy your car i would played with my brother sam and it took us a while the cars have a lot of health and we ended up smashing into walls like 30 times but eventually we managed to blow up the car and um, if you're in it, when it explodes, you die. Luckily, we were outside. We then um, tried to hack another car. Couldn't do it because our hacking skill was too low. So we just shot the driver in the head instead. And that allowed us just to jack the car and drive around with it. And then that was it. Later on, our car that had blown up magically reappeared. So I'm not sure what the law behind that is but anyway our car magically reappears after it blows up but yeah world exploration wise there are obviously your main quests there are side quests which are structured quests that you will go through and then there's also your generic world quests which are you know you walk up to a spot and it's kind of like a randomly populated boss which is exactly what happened to me i went there and just some random guy that was there and i was fighting him you know so there's different layers of quest and different layers of world objectives there's also bounty hunts you can do uh, 
there's markers all over the map and you can go and pick up any one of those anytime you like. This game really drops you in it very fast. You know, once you've done that opening sort of section for whatever you've chosen, and then you've done like the first main quest, you can pretty much go wherever you like in the city and immediately start doing side quests. They are level gated. So if you're not high enough level yet, you won't be able to do them, but you do have the freedom to go wherever you please, uh, which is nice. Oh, and one other thing, I found the boxing quest. You remember how in The Witcher, Geralt had like the, the title thing where he would just go around to all the villages and get into boxing matches and beat everyone. And eventually he'd just keep winning and winning. They have the same thing here and I found it. So there you go. Start fights in the street and you never know, you might be the champion of Night City, like Geralt. Oh, I also killed some civilians. Turns out you can just kill anyone you see. Uh, they'll all run around crazily trying to get away from you. And uh, then eventually the cops will come out if you get a high enough star rating and they will just KO you immediately. There was also just momentary altercations happening that I could step into. I was in my apartment building and I saw a guy sort of like, you know, abusing a woman and eventually he started hitting her. And so I just shot him in the head and that was that. So, uh, you know, you can choose whether or not to intervene in those you don't have to, but they're just things that are going on in the world that you can, you know, step to if you want. So the next thing I did was another quest that was very narratively driven. This is where I had some problems, okay? I had a really big problem with this quest. And what it is, it's, remember in Detroit Become Human, how you can go to a crime scene and you can actually rewind events and then sort of like play them back and zoom in on certain things to see details, etc. It does the same thing here, only it does it in a way more clunky way and some of the takes way longer, okay? There were two sequences back to back where I could review surveillance footage, essentially, or someone's memories, essentially. There were three different layers that I could analyze that. There's the visual, there's the audio, and there's the thermal. And there's a timeline at the top for each of them. And I kind of need to switch between these three layers while watching events unfold and moving the camera around. Like, you are not gonna understand how this works until you see it in action. And I will tell you that I played for five hours. This was the only time in the whole thing I was not having fun because it was clunky and slow and cumbersome. Navigating the menu took way too long. It was super unclear what I needed to do. And the whole scene that I needed to sort of like pass through just went forever, you know? I hope that I don't have to do too many of these sequences. That's all I'll say. Uh, yeah, they were, it was, it was uh, not, not, not fun. But look, you know, maybe the other ones that I experience are in the future are way better. I don't know, these, these two that I experienced back to back were the definite low point for the demo. I definitely have some mixed feelings about narrative as well and dialogue and how that's flowing for me. You're very much dropped in the deep end of this game straight away. And that's a good thing from a freedom perspective, but I did find it a bit overwhelming because you know, you're thrown into Night City and it immediately feels like, you know, you've met 30 people as soon as you start and you've heard 30 different stories and 30 accents and just a lot comes at you really fast. And I feel like you could have slowed it down a little bit and it probably would have been better. Obviously, I can't say that definitively yet because I need to see the whole journey and how that five hours fits into it. But I definitely felt at times where I was like, whoa, pump the brakes a little bit. Let me get to know this person before I go and meet 10 other people. You know, that was essentially the thought going through my mind. And with dialogue as well, because there were these goals of introducing so many people and so much information, you know, it felt a little bit rushed at times, you know? I'd say a good parallel is something like Blade Runner, right? Blade Runner gives scenes a lot of space to breathe. It's sort of very quiet and you can you can sort of absorb it. This game is the exact opposite of that. This game is just constantly in your face, at you, exposition dumps, new character introductions, just madness 24 seven. I'm not sure if that pacing is a good thing because the entire experience is so dense that you kind of don't have time to slow down or I'm not sure if it will end up hurting the experience because you know, 50 or 60 hours or something, that, that level of pace might be a little bit overwhelming. I don't know, too difficult to say yet, but um, that's definitely something I'm watching. So look, overall, I have to say that, you know, the, just the, the sheer level of ambition on display here was astounding. You know, I honestly, the level of visual detail that went into every space I encountered was stunning. The design of every single NPC was incredible. 
all of the voice acting was top notch. You know, you had three distinctly different starting areas. What I saw of the different perk opportunities, the way you can customize your character. I don't even know if I talked about this. If I haven't, there's so many perks that are baked into this game. Wait till you see what is possible in terms of character customization. It's, it's huge. I don't know, man. It's just these guys obviously have been working for what, eight, nine years more on this thing. You can see that they have not slouched a day of that. They have just put so much into this. That five hours was some of the densest five hours I think I've ever had playing video games. Just in terms of stuff coming at you, some people will find that overwhelming. I definitely found it a little bit overwhelming for sure. But more than that, I just found it awe-inspiring because I was like, wow, look at this thing. Imagine experiencing all of this for 50 hours. Imagine what is hidden in the tiny crevices of CD Projekt Red's imagination. Imagine what this city is hiding. Imagine the characters I will meet. Imagine the builds I will build and the moments I'll have. Like I honestly was thinking that as I was going through it. The CD Projekt Red or the staff member nearby was kind of chuckling was sometimes I was just like, Fuck man, you know. I don't even meet Keanu Reeves yet. I'm not even up to Keanu when I feel this way. So imagine what happens when I, when I meet him. Anyway, that's my impressions. Wait, those are my impressions of Cyberpunk. It's looking pretty good. So you should probably check it out. One last thing before we go, this part of the video is sponsored by NVIDIA and Inno3D and it relates to ray tracing. Ray tracing, if you're not aware, is essentially a way of simulating light that is more realistic than you know we have had in the past. This game is shipping with ray tracing enabled at launch. I saw ray tracing in this demo that I played. It is easily the best demonstration of ray tracing I've ever seen, better than Control in fact, which already did an absolutely superb job. Just unbelievable how they've managed to implement this. It was running at a very, very solid 60 FPS for me the entire time, well and truly more than that, a lot of it. Obviously I was running on an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p, but it's shipping with DLSS 2.0. Essentially, it allows you to run your games at a lower resolution, but they look like they are running at a higher resolution. That means that your GPU is working less hard to produce those images and it can spend that excess power on say, ray tracing. So when I did it recently with Control, I was essentially able to double my frame rates while I was using DLSS 2.0. DLSS is an absolute game changer when it comes to giving your GPU enough headroom to be able to run games with ray tracing racing enabled. If you are getting Cyberpunk, I very strongly recommend having an RTX ray tracing enabled card because you don't want to miss how good this looks. I experienced it for five hours. It looks incredible. If you are looking for a ray tracing enabled card for Cyberpunk, I really strongly recommend the Inno 3D GeForce RTX 2080 Superclock iChill Black. It manages to absolutely ace the two metrics that are most important for liquid cooled cards, which is excellent temperatures and whisper quiet operation. It's very quiet. It looks very smart and it will absolutely get the job done. If you're interested in that card, I'm gonna leave links in the description below. Thank you very much to Inno3D and NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching it and thank City Project Red for inviting me to the event because I had a blast and I can't wait to play more. Anyway, that's the video guys. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.